morning, we take a different direction than focusing on our theme of strength in the struggle. And I believe once I get into the sermon for this morning, you will understand why on May 28th, 2023, that we are veering off from the path of strength in the struggle and going into a direction that will land us the importance of this day. And I have quite a few scriptures to read to you this morning. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you some of these words. I'm going to butcher it, but I'm going to try to get through some of these names. But there are, there are a lot of verses that I want to read to you. And I believe once I'm done and you hear where we're going, you'll understand. While strength in the struggle is important, this is the day that we all need to be thankful for and recognize the significance of it. So I won't be before you long. Let's, let's go ahead and get to the word of God. Let's go to Acts, the uh, second chapter. Acts, the second chapter, and we'll begin at the first verse. I'll be reading to you this morning from the King James Version. The scriptures will be on the screens behind me as we look to see what God is saying to us this morning. You look there, you'll find these, these words. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and as it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galatians? And how hear we every man in our own tongue? wherein we were born. Parthians, Medes, the Amalites, the dwellers of Mesopotamia, and Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, and Phygra, and Philippia, in Egypt, and in parts of Libya, about Serene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes. Cretes, Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful work of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to, the, one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, somebody say, But Peter, Peter. standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is what which was spoken by the prophet Joel. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and to the doing of his holy word. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Our dear God, we thank you now. We thank you what has all transpired thus far in this service. We thank you for the songs that have gone forth. We thank you for the highlights of mental health awareness. But now, God, we are at this appointed time and appointed place where your word needs to go forth with power and conviction, Lord God. Allow this earthly vessel to decrease, Lord God, that your word would increase. I pray that this message would touch those that are here in this place those that are viewing virtually, Lord God, that somehow through today's sermon, their lives, our lives would be changed forevermore, knowing that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And God, we thank you now. It is in Christ's magnificent name we pray. Amen and amen. 
I'd like to start off today's sermon by talking about a specific number. And the specific number I want to talk about is the number 50. The number 50 can be an imposing and impressive number all at the same time. I want to tell you when I was 17 years old, I I could not conceive in my mind what it would be like to be 50. It just seemed so far down the road that I couldn't even see past 25. 50 is like half a century. It requires so much time. I, I want to take you back to Leviticus where it talks about the year of Jubilee. And the year of Jubilee happened every 50 years. And on that 50th year, all of the property was returned back to the original owners. All the debt was forgiven. And all the slaves were freed on the year of Jubilee. If I'm ever running for office, I'm going to try to institute the year of Jubilee once again. Get my debt forgiven, get back some of those properties I've sold. But 50 is such a big number. Uh, In relationship, uh, if you're married and you've been married for more than 50 years, that is quite an achievement within itself. A lot of things have to go right to stay married for 50 plus years. Am I right about it this morning? In fact, in American culture, people believe that if you've been married for more than 50 years, you have reached rarefied air. Uh, The Census Bureau says that only 6% of marriages reach the 50th anniversary. So if you're here today, and you've been married for 50 or more years, would you please stand? Do we have anybody who's been married for more than 50 years? Praise God. God bless you. Well done, thou good and faithful soldiers. Uh, For those of us who are still coming down that road, we have to reach out and talk to y'all. But I want to go back to 50 once again because maybe you say, Jeff, uh, I'm not married and, uh, or i am not been married for 50 years, so how is that 50 is going to connect me? I'm glad you asked that question. Because I believe in birthday celebrations that 50th is the platinum of all celebrations. See, when, when you, ce- you haven't celebrated a birthday until you celebrated your 50th birthday, I don't care if it's in the backyard, in the basement, you rent out the entire resort. I don't care what you do. But when you celebrate your 50th birthday party, it's a big deal, y'all. My mind goes back to when my wife, Brenda, on her 49th birthday, decided that she was going to give me the requirements for her 50th birthday. (laughs) And, And fellas, that threw me for a loop because in my mind, I'm thinking I got 364 days before I have to worry about that. See, I can be a last-minute shopper and get what I need. But she began to lay out the requirements for her 50th birthday. And when I heard the requirements, I was quick to realize that I was in over my head. There's no way I could fully understand what she wanted. Thank God for sisters in the church. Thank God for family and friends. I called the ladies, and the ladies put the committee together, and I only had to do one thing, write the check. And so the day came where Brenda, we had Brenda's 50th birthday party. We had a great celebration, which leads me to where I want to try to park a subject with you this morning about a celebration. And I want to talk to you on the subject of a Holy Ghost celebration. A Holy Ghost celebration. So the question may beg, why did I spend so much time talking about the number 50? Well, today on May the 28th here in 2023, this is the day of Pentecost. And Pentecost, that word means 50. And 50 meaning it is 50 days, it's recognized, it's uh, 50 days after Easter is when we recognize the day of Pentecost. It is that Pentecost is the day that the Holy Spirit descends down on the followers of Jesus while they're in Jerusalem. And great and magnificent things began to happen. But, but, but in order to kind of get further into the text, I want to tell you how we landed here in the second chapter. And I believe in order to do that, I got to kind of back up to where we are, where we started in the first chapter. 
For in the first chapter, if you just walk back in there, you will see that Jesus is talking to the disciples and he is there for 40 days. And he, and he tells them, do not leave Jerusalem because he wanted them to tarry there because he states that John baptized you with water. But not many days from now, I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The day of Pentecost. Well, then maybe that's not connecting the way I wanted to connect with you. So let me let me try to give it to you from this perspective. It was not long ago, 50 plus days that Reverend Drake stood right here on Good Friday and he preached from the cross. And then on Easter, it wasn't 50 days ago, on Easter I preached on running to Jesus. Now we're 50 days beyond that. It's still time to celebrate what God is doing in our life. So this is where we find ourselves talking about that Holy Ghost celebration. And I don't plan to be before you long because I believe there are some quick points that we can grab from this and begin to celebrate what God is doing in our lives as it relates to the Holy Ghost. And I believe as you look at this text, one of the things that jumps out of you is that they were all with one accord in one place. I believe we have to understand the distinction there because everybody can be in one place. But not everybody can be on the same accord when they're in that same place. Am I right about it this morning? It's important to understand that as a church, we have to be on one accord. And one place, one place, trying to move forward for the Lord. And there they were in this place in one accord. And I know there is a lot of discussions about tongues and not tongues. And I want to park that on the side because as Reverend Drake said about uh, Easter, in order to get to Easter, you had to have a good Friday. So in order to get to the tongues you got to have one accord in one place. Because if you don't have that, you can't get to that part of the equation. But I'm not here to talk about that part. I'm really here to talk about celebrating the Holy Spirit. And as we look at this text, you can see that they began to make a lot of noise. And people began to wonder what was going on over there. They were amazed, and some say they were in doubt. I'll park here to say that when God starts moving in your life, those that are watching will be amazed at what God is doing in our lives. You know, I look at this portion, and for those people that were amazed, I like to think that they were onlookers and not participants. In this life, we can be a participant or we can be an observer. In my military career and in my professional government career, uh, there was this leadership approach that required us to think about three things about people. And there are three kinds of people in this world. There are the people that make things happen. There are the people that watch things happen. And there are the people that go, what just happened? <laughs> and I believe that these onlookers were saying, what just happened? And they began to doubt what was transpiring with these individuals. I, I submit to you that when God is moving in our lives, there will be people who see us and begin to doubt what God is doing. But I am further convinced that the more God starts moving in our life and the more they start watching, God is still yet going to move. They may not change their doubt about it, but God is still going to move in the midst. Am I right about it this morning? We're talking about a Holy Ghost celebration. Being in one place and being on one accord. You know, John baptized with water. Day of Pentecost was a baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I look at this text, and 
the thing that jumps out me sometimes jumps out to me about this text is that sometimes when people don't understand your actions and your behavior, they automatically default to ha- that it has to be something negative. So they saw and they heard the commotion and they began to mock these individuals, thinking that they were filled with new wine. I wonder why they didn't jump to a more positive conclusion in life. But it lets me know in today's society, people sometimes will interpret what you do for God as something that's weird, something that's different, something that's strange. But the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us through all of that. So whatever you're doing for God, don't stop doing it. I don't care if they look at you funny. I don't care if they ostracize you. I don't care if they talk about firing you. You keep on serving the Lord. For the old folks used to say, serving the Lord is going to pay off after a while. I I want to circle back because when I was trying to work on the subject for this morning, I realized that there was another subject that I wanted to use other than the Holy Ghost celebration. And I believe once I tell you the subject, I believe that you can finish the rest of the subject for me. I I wanted to go a completely different direction on the subject. And the subject that I was going to say is this. Ain't no party. Oh, y'all help me in here this morning. I know if I check your birth certificate, it doesn't say Antioch Baptist Church. Ain't no party. Because the Holy Ghost party. All right now. But I'm a sidebar. But I can see Wayne and Tony coming saying, Reverend G, all that ain't going to fit on the screen. <laughs> so you got you to work that down. But we're talking about celebration of the Holy Spirit. I, I talked about there's anniversaries, there's birthdays, and all these other events. But this is a celebration that we must not overlook. I've heard comments from people going, I didn't, I didn't know there's this thing as a day of Pentecost on a Sunday. And it wasn't because of lack of knowledge. It's just that we haven't brought a lot of attention to it. Today, that changes. Today, that's why we veered off from the path of strength in the struggle. So, you know, going forward from this next year, day of Pentecost arrive around. We need to hear and celebrate the day of Pentecost. You know, the question begs, how or what should we celebrate about the Holy Spirit? I like to think of these three particular things that, at minimum, that should cause us to celebrate. And the first one then is he will never leave us nor forsake us. For the Bible says, if you love me, obey my commandments. I will ask the Father that he will give you another advocate, and he will never leave you. The, another reason is the Holy Spirit guides us. When the, Holy, when the Spirit of truth comes, it will guide us into all truth. It's so easy to get veered off the path, but when you're led by the Holy Spirit, it will keep you focused on where God wants us to go. And lastly, the Holy Ghost is our helper. For the Bible says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. That's worthy of a celebration. Well, maybe we're not there just yet. So I want to circle back to the last verse of the text that I just read. And you'll find these words. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So the question begged, what did the prophet Joel speak about? Well, it goes like this. In the last days, I declare I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons 
and your daughters shall prophesy. The young men shall see visions. The old folks like me shall dream again. There will be signs and wonders in heaven of the goodness of God. If that wasn't the pop, the cork on the Welch's grape juice, I had to practice that. <laughs> if that wasn't listening, happy birthday. Let me tell you what the celebration statement is as I prepare to land this plane. And here's what Joel said. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If, if that doesn't cause us to celebrate the goodness of the Lord, where would you be? Where would I be if God had not saved us from that old life of ours? We would be towed up from the flow of them. Headed for hell's hot fire, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can I get one witness in the building here this morning? As we wrap this up for today, it is important to remember that 50 days ago, Jesus rose from the grave. And because, from Pentecost Day, and because of that, our lives have been completely changed. We now have a right to eternal life. We have an advocate with the Father. We have a comforter that comforted us in the midnight hour. He has brought down that Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. God bless you today. God bless you.